102 athletes uh, for this team, Charles. Pretty big, really, considering uh, the Federated States of Micronesia. We haven't seen them too often, but they'll be competing in seven sports. Baseball, they're the bronze medalists from Guam, so look out for them there. Weightlifting as well. FSM, very strong. Manuel Mingenfell is another one of these young lifters. They've got a good track team as well coming through. Soccer, they'll be playing uh, in the men's competition. And the significance of the design of the flag is that the Federated States of Micronesia consists of, of four states, Yap, Chuk, Ponape and Kosrai. And uh, they recently competed last year, I think it was, the fifth Micronesian Games that was actually uh, uh, hosted and the flag there. 1,500 the athletes, of a, a sort of a, a, a small version Stadium. of the South Pacific Games. And something that uh, they're looking forward to doing more often across the Pacific with the various well regions breaking up into their geographic areas. Player, Micronesia, for instance, FSM. Melanesia, Polynesia and so on. Interesting to note as well that FSM indeed was one of the first countries to arrive here in Fiji uh, to try and get the most out of your facilities here and that's exactly what they've been doing. It has something that's been observed. The, the switch of the venues from the north of the Pacific to the south of the Pacific we're seeing a return to what one might describe as commonwealth sports uh, squash, netball, lawn bowls and that presumably would be an advantage to some countries, a disadvantage to others specifically countries like FSM, uh, Guam uh, one would imagine but nevertheless a great deal of uh, sports development money going into that part of the world certainly being targeted by the International Iorana Olympic Committee to French Polynesia, Tahiti and a huge welcome for French Polynesia, very, very popular competitors. We welcomed uh, to the National Stadium their political leader, Gaston Floss, who is sitting with the VIPs, and he will be tremendously proud to welcome out his team. Sport means so much in the context of French Polynesia and New Caledonian Wallace and Fortuna, and uh, very, very significant resources invested into the fabric of sports, the infrastructure in all three of the French territories. And uh, another lovely touch as well, Charles, is the fact that uh, Tahiti have brought with them a number of athletes that competed here in 1963. You might be able to see or recognize a few faces in the background there if you were in Fiji back in 1963. But uh, two flag bearers as well today. Vitia Colombani, who is a volleyballer, in fact a part of the Oceania gold medal team. And another track and field star for Tahiti, Veronique Boyer. Now if you watch closely the South Pacific Games, the mini South Pacific Games from Norfolk Island, you will remember that Veronique was absolutely awesome in track and field. Always very, very colorful, the uh, French Polynesians, the Tahitians. And uh, we remember, of course, that wonderful uh, Games of 1995, those, uh, that massive opening ceremony with the dancing, the ukuleles, and the wonderful rhythms, color, and sounds of beautiful French Polynesia. But they're here today, a sizable team, very competitive, and uh, they certainly will be doing their level best here to try and get right on top of this uh, medal tally. The last time the Games uh, were hosted in Fiji was in 1979 and it was really the competition between New Caledonia and, and French Polynesia that stole the show from, from Fiji. What's it going to take, do you think, Brendan, to dislodge Tahiti and, and New Caledonia from the top of the medal tally? Well, I think in some sports it's already started, Charles. If you just take a look at tennis uh, as one sport uh, that we can use in, as an example here, the, uh, the stranglehold which the French-speaking Pacific have had on that particular sport I think is probably going to be loosened somewhat here. We've got some amazing tennis players coming through the International Tennis Federation program here run by uh, the ITF uh, over at Latoka and uh, Dan O'Connell and the team there have produced some wonderful tennis players. Fiji of course now part of the Davis Cup 
and in tennis is one sport where it's already started and I think the uh, French territories are well aware of that and uh, the Tahitians of course also trying to break away a little bit politically from France as well which means they don't quite have the metropolitan access to some of the coaching and uh, training programs which they once used to and so consequently there is a great deal of rivalry between them and the New Caledonians and we're going to see some very interesting competition here over the next few days. Always very animated and of course they are beautiful ukulele players. The Ukes in Tahiti, boy can they not... to Kiribas. Kiribati, the Micronesian team, not far from Nauru, a sizable contingent here for the 12th South Pacific Games. A proud record in sports and looking for IOC, International Olympic Committee membership in the not too distant future as well. They have really tried to put a lot into their sports infrastructure in the last few years and in fact come to Fiji for these 12 South Pacific Games with a team of 120. 70 already here. As, uh, Charlie already mentioned, a number of teams are holding off bringing their teams in until the last possible moment. They fly them in and fly them out. For instance, a lot of the track and field athletes won't be here until week two of competition. Nevertheless, a sizable contingent from Kiribati. And the significance of Kiribati in the South Pacific Games arena here at the National Stadium is that it was in the 1979 South Pacific Games that they competed for the first time as Kiribati and Tuvalu following the independence from Britain of the Gilbert and Ellis Islands. They took up their own identity and this was really the first time at those games in 79 that they developed that distinct and unique identity under which they compete now. And Kiribati, as I say, looking for NOC status. They should be at Athens in 2004 in their own right. They need five affiliated, five internationally affiliated sports, and they can become IOC members. Interesting to note that Kevin Gosper, the Oceania president, is here today, and I think he'll be keeping a pretty close eye on Kiribati and its performances Yankwe over the next week or so to here the in the Marshall Islands. You're getting a sense here as the camera moves from left to right at the National Stadium of just what an incredible view the lucky spectators of the opening ceremony have. These athletes marching firstly in front of the grandstand and moving clockwise around the National Stadium so that everybody gets to enjoy the sights and sounds of the South Pacific Games opening ceremony. bearer for the Marshall Islands is tennis player David Milne. And welcomed into the National Stadium here in Suva is this small contingent from the Marshall Islands, another of the Micronesian teams. Nine competitors here in Suva so far, more to join, three sports in fact. They'll be going in tennis, they have a shot putter and also a weightlifter. Derek Milne, I believe, is their flag bearer there. One of two Milne brothers, in fact. Both of them are tennis players. But uh, watch out for the Marshall Islands. They might be small, but let me tell you, Charlie, in the next couple of days, Roman Cress 
This uh, US-based sprinter from the Marshalls is arriving in town and he will be taking it up to the very best sprinters from our part of the Pacific. Roman Press, a guy to watch out for in the 100 and 200. He ran some sensational times there last year. We haven't seen him do it in this part of the world. But the question is, will he be able to take on the likes of uh, Peter Pulu, perhaps even Jonah Delai here next week in track and field? But Roman Press, watch Mogoran out for him from the Marshalls. To Nauru. And there's going to be a huge welcome for the Nauru contingent. Brendan, you can speak very knowledgeably on Nauru after your experiences there as a broadcaster. Nauru, of course, that uh, tiny dot smack on the equator, bang, smack in the centre of the Pacific. A tiny country, but boy, do they have a pedigree and a tradition now. And there is one of them carrying the flag. That's Rihanna Solomon. Rihanna is a super heavyweight in the women's weightlifting competition part of this amazing tradition that this small country has basically uh, turned this sport on its head Paul Popper, a former national coach of Australia of course you know the story, went up to Nauru basically turned the entire country on to weightlifting and through a couple of uh, famous champions one of them Marcus Stephen and more recently Rihanna Solomon here, the flag bearer really has taken it up to some of the powers. In fact, uh, the exploits of the Nauruans now eclipsing the weightlifters of New Zealand and Australia, mixing it with the world's best. And uh, Paul Coffer has great aspirations. Tiny Batsiwa there, one of the women's weightlifters in picture. But uh, Paul Coffer now, of course, has uh, brought his uh, weightlifting machine down here to Fiji, based in Singatoka, where he's had over 80, 80 lifters and is predicting that uh, the Nauruans could be vulnerable this time because the same talents that he's discovered in Nauru are also, he says, available in other parts of the Pacific as well. Nauru had a thumping performance in the uh, South Pacific Games in Guam. They won a total of 27 golds, 8 silvers and 7 bronzes. They won 3 bronzes in boxing, but all of the rest of their medals, including that swag of 27 golds, came from weightlifting. And there were a total of 45 gold medals up for grabs at this South Pacific Games in weightlifting alone. The most gold medals of any sport is weightlifting, and Nauru must be looking at that. And they have to be as well, because we're talking Commonwealth standard weightlifters here. Now, the Nauruans took it over to Manchester. Bonjour and, to uh, came New away Caledonia. With a bag full of medals as well, Charles. So, this is a serious team here. The Nauruans, extremely powerful. But uh, as we say, they could be vulnerable in the men's competition. Going to make for some wonderful, uh, wonderful competition. It's hard to talk about Nauru, obviously, without reference to the economic problems that they're going through. They had to trim down their contingent to the uh, mini South Pacific Games. Um, they were hoping to compete in athletics, golf and tennis, but their national airline was grounded. They could send an athletics contingent because the squad was actually already in Australia. Now, let's see what reception New Caledonia receive when they the flag come in front of this cavernous audience Olivier here. Saminadin, a great deal of patriotism you can feel Laura in this uh, Fiji contingent, in this Fiji audience, champion. and New Caledonia Both obviously, gold in they the last will definitely be games. the team that Fiji has New to Caledonia dislodge is also if they are to take the gold medal or the overall medal tally championship. Well back in 1963 when we were here for the first time it was Fiji which reigned supreme on the gold medal count then with 34. New Caledonia finished with just seven in third place but by 1979 New Caledonia was dominating It dislodged French Polynesia into second place and Fiji was third. New Caledonia reigning champs from Guam in 1999 with 72 goals, Fiji's 33. So you can see that it's going to be on and Fiji of course absolutely determined to celebrate this birthday party with an awesome showing here. But New Caledonia with a team totaling some 500. They'll compete in 28 of the 32 sports on offer. And they are world class. They can rely on the Metropolitan France training programs as we enjoy this traditional welcome as well. Oh, 
a wonderful spectacle here at the South Pacific Games as the various teams put on this important cultural display. And this is what we love about the game so much, Charles. I mean, it's basically, we're, we're touching the Pacific and the Pacific is touching us. And it's no surprise that the organizers of the South Pacific Games selected the motto, the Pacific at its best. When you see a ceremony like that, you really appreciate the rich diverseness of the cultures. Yet somehow there's a, a spirit, there's a, there's a humor that underscores everything that takes place at the South Pacific Games. It's serious, but it's not that serious. Flag bearer there is uh, Lorraine, Laura Lorraine. She's a top volleyballer, multiple gold medalist. And Charles uh, Samida is the other of the two flag bearers for New Caledonia today. We already uh, saw uh, Pierre Rogier, the president of the New Caledonia Congress, arrive earlier on as part of the dignitaries here. He's also a French senator, so I'm sure he'll be very, feeling very proud of uh, what's happening here today and probably feeling very confident as well, Charles. Sports fans in Fiji will uh, remember New Caledonia and New Caledonia's rather strange political situation because they were allowed by the Oceania Football Confederation to compete in the same group as Fiji in the FIFA Under-17 Championship qualifiers in this region and they actually topped the group but under their regulations they can't actually enter into a championship if there is a chance they might play France. So although they topped the group they didn't go through to their playoff game against Australia, and Australia qualified automatically through to that championship. Look is, there, at this. is there any sense of that situation being resolved at some point? It I seems a sort of half in and half out arrangement. I think I think it's uh, it's on the to be looked at uh, hook at the moment, Charles. But just having a look at this massive team from New Caledonia, not quite in picture, but for us, they stretch the entire length of this uh, main stadium here just a huge contingent from New Caledonia and the other thing Charles about New Caledonia they organize themselves into supporter groups as well so it might be a table tennis player or a volleyballer on the other side of town Eric Gay there the president of the New Caledonia Federation just waving his hat a former basketballer gold medalist himself but uh, New Caledonia just uh, an amazing team and as I say so well organized they'll go and support their respective uh, teammates wherever they might be competing Nui, the next of our teams to enter the stadium here and the crowd is getting boisterous, Charles. They're really beginning to warm to this. They are absolutely revving up. I think the challenge that was uh, thrown down by New Caledonia and French Polynesia has, has, has given the, the crowd here an appetite for a lot more. Obviously, Fiji will be the last team on, but you can just sense a great, uh, a great upswelling of national pride as these foreigners, as it were, come through the national stadium and the, the atmosphere is building up to a crescendo, exactly what the organizers wanted. UA competing with 120 athletes here at the South Pacific Games. Athletics, boxing. Of course, you might remember from the Commonwealth Games, it was uh, Star Toese, I think their middleweight, who caused a sensation when he defeated the Australian Turner in one of the early rounds and uh, Star Toese for a couple of days was uh, an absolute hero in the boxing fraternity. Nobody had heard of him. He was uh, turning down the interview requests from all over the world but uh, Nui is here and in strength and as I say they'll be competing in 13 sports here. In fact uh, they've given their flag bearing responsibility to one of their uh, bodybuilders a gold medalist from the mini games because bodybuilding of course was held in Norfolk and uh, brought the house down over there they'd never seen it before of course and uh, in fact there is we just saw a glimpse there of Star Tawes a ball of guy just walking through shot
to seeing the last of the athletes from the little tiny Pacific Island of Niue coming through the what will be the starting area for the men's 100 meters when we come to athletics in week two of the South Pacific Games. Well, you talk of uh, tiny islands, Charles, and this is one of them, Norfolk Island, just about to join us here. They were, of course, the hosts of the last mini games in 2001. And that is Gary Robinson there, their flag bearer today, who's done so much for the sport of squash. And uh, you might not be able to see him, but just out to the left, a uh, more elderly Robinson, gentleman, Tom Lloyd, who's been around the East Pacific for so Norfolk many Island years now, Secretary General of the Norfolk Island Sports uh, Association, just applauding there. And the flag carrying the representation for which the Norfolk Island is so famous, the Norfolk Pine Tree, the reason that this tiny speck in the Pacific Islands was first colonized. They were looking for a, a supply of reliable trees for refurbishing yachts, boats that were then built from timber. But alas, it wasn't to be because I don't think the Norfolk Island Pines were quite suitable. But uh, interesting to note as well, Charles, that Tom Lloyd, Dennis Sterling, who's now the new president of the Norfolk Island Sports Association, and Gary Robinson, were all here back in 1979 when Fiji, of course, for the second time hosted the South Pacific Games. to Northern Marianas. Norfolk Island here, being welcomed by this massive crowd which is well and truly getting behind this parade of athletes, all 22 nations to be on show here, of course culminating in the arrival of host nation Fiji, not too far away and you can sense the atmosphere building. The Northern Marianas come onto the national stadium track and they will be making their way in front of the grandstand and the VIPs for a full circuit of the pitch. The Northern Marianas competed in the fifth Micronesian Games that took place the last year. The they actually Northern ended Marianas up winning the most Tammy number of gold field. medals, 24 golds, but lost out in the overall medal tally to Palau. But they did win those two crucial gold medals in spearfishing, Brendan. Very important as well. But uh, let me tell you, they've got a quite credential team here as well. Uh, Jeff Race is one of them, Charlie, who we'll be seeing in the tennis competition. In fact, uh, viewers in Fiji might uh, recognize Jeff. He's been around for a number of years. In fact, he's a Pacific Oceania Davis Cup tennis coach. He's in awesome form at the moment. And another of their top tennis players, Peter Sinclair, has switched from tennis to triathlon. And they're rating themselves here as well. Uh, Dean Palacios is one of their young swimmers. Sinjin Lee in picture there, another of the young swimming team from CNMI. And also perhaps a fitting farewell here for one of the staunchest sports administrators from the Pacific, Bill Sakovich, is um, stepping down and retiring shortly. And you might be hearing a little bit of Bill's work here on our broadcast over the next week or so. He'll be helping us down at the swimming next week when competition gets underway. But Bill Sikovic and his wife, Jean, have done so much for sports in CNMI, retiring to Hawaii. And that produces some interesting situations at the South Pacific Games Council because he'll be stepping down as Secretary General. Let's see what sort of welcome Papua New Guinea gets. Tao waves them forward. Come on.
come on, Papua New Guinea come through and this is definitely going to be a powerful welcome from the National Stadium crowd. Papua New Guinea always very colourful, always very exciting and something of a, of a long lost rival with Fiji. They are indeed, Charles, and we're looking forward immensely to what this team can produce over the next two weeks of competition here. 360 athletes all up representing Papua New Guinea, 220 of them here already. They're represented in 24 sports. They definitely have had their problems. Finance was a major drama for them at one stage, but the government stepped up 1.5 million kina from them. And they're here and in numbers. 24 sports, as I say, watch out for them in a series of uh, competitions, especially uh, in the swimming pool here. They have a powerful swimming team led by none other than Ryan Kinney, who would have to be Commonwealth ranked at the moment. And Ryan will be swimming a series of distances. Their boxing team will be led by Lynn Shapira, a gold medalist uh, from the Commonwealth Games. Naluga Guy is their current squash Oceania champion. In weightlifting, Dika Tour has been phenomenal in performance at the Oceania level. Their netball team, silver medalists from Guam in 1999 when they turned that competition on its head, relegating the Cook Islands to bronze medal. And Taekwondo, because Stanley Nandex and Edward Kassman, their flag bearer today, did eventually make the team after it was thought that perhaps money would keep them away. But they are here, they're here in numbers, and believe me, despite their funding problems, this is going to be a very powerful team. Just reviewing their performance at the uh, Guam South Pacific Games in 99, that bears out your analysis there. Their best three sports were athletics. They got three golds in the athletics, six silver, six bronze, swimming five golds in total, four silver and seven bronze, and weightlifting two golds, 18 silvers and 10 bronzes. They finished with a total of 19 gold medals at the 99 Games, 32 silvers and 34 bronzes. They'd be looking to improve a lot of silvers and bronzes they really need to push that forward into a gold medal performance. Well, as, as we welcome them here, Charles, in fact, three of their top sprinters are uh, in the United States competing on the collegiate uh, system over there at the moment. They'll fly in ahead of the track and field. Peter Pulu is one of them, and he stands to be perhaps the guy to beat in the 100 and 200 metres here in Fiji. He would certainly make himself very unpopular within Fiji if he comes through with his uh, the potential that he's been showing. That's going to be a huge competition, those Blue Ribbon events and the track in the second week of the games competition. The, black for Palau is a long the yellow music. disc against the blue Finish. background is Palau. They make their way out onto the track here. Another of the Micronesian teams, 117 athletes, hosts of the 2007 Mini South Pacific Games and a great deal of sports development going on in that part of the world. As I mentioned earlier, Brendan, they were winners in the overall medal tally.